Some time ago, I heard Sidney Poitier receiving his first Oscar, and he said, it has been a long journey to this moment. And I feel that way. Every time I come up here, I know it's been a really long journey to this moment where I am now able to give back. Now, I had my first job at age nine in Holland. It was a newspaper route, and it ended abruptly when I was mugged. Now, at that time, it seemed like the worst possible thing that could have happened. But in I, as I look back in retrospect, guns weren't used then. Knives weren't used. So I just got beaten up. <laughs> I then went on to Stuyvesant High School. And the first institution that made it possible for me to stand here was Stuyvesant. Because at that time, they had two sessions. One started at 8 in the morning and ended at about noon or a little after. And then the other one started at 1 p.m. and ended at 5. Now that meant everything to me because had I been admitted to any other high school, I wouldn't have been able to work. And I had to work to support the family. So I remember standing, I lived on Convent Avenue, and I remember coming out and waiting for a streetcar. Many of you may not know what a streetcar is, but it preceded the bus. And I was waiting for the streetcar to take me to a subway, which would then take me to another subway. And eventually, I wound up on East 15th Street, Stuyvesant High School. And as I would wait for the streetcar, I'd look up at the sky, and it seemed to be night. Well, I had to be downtown at 8 AM, so I was standing there around 6.30 in the morning. OK, and then it reversed over time, and I went to the afternoon session. And then, at last, my entrance to City College. And one thing that I remember about City College, for me, which was important, was that I could take my courses whenever I could. The schedule was flexible. I, I, were, I took courses during the summer. And hot summer, sitting in a psychology class, and air conditioning then, was open the window. And I remember as the window was open, I heard this wonderful music coming from the then Lewison Stadium, which was where we are now. I always thought that that was a loss, that it was demolished. I, I really did. But, but anyhow, the, the, the Harlem that I knew then was, was totally different from what it is today. And I just want to take a moment to let some of you know what it was for a person of color. I remember seeing a huge sign in front of a building on Convent Avenue that said, now open to select colored tenants. Select. Now, most of you know about the segregation history of this country, but I doubt if many of you ever would have thought that it occurred in New York. You would say, oh, Mississippi, Alabama, and so on. Well, the difference was, that in New York, it was de facto segregation. And down south, it was de jure. It was the law. And, and I, I remember, I will never forget this. I wish I had had a camera to take a picture of it, because some people don't believe it. Well, happy ending to this. Many years later, as Elena mentioned, I became a commissioner on human rights. What did that allow me to do? To end whatever discrimination still exists in housing in this country, and in this city. And I was delighted to be able to do that. So things have a way of coming around. Now, you realize that we, City College, Stuyvesant people, are everywhere. And I will tell you how I remember this. This summer, I went up to Woodlawn Cemetery to select the last property that I will ever probably own. <laughs> and this wonderful man was telling me about the mausoleums and the this and the that, and Miles Davis is buried over here, and so on. But finally, we got to know each other a little better, and he said, I went to City College. And I said, I, I can believe that. You're so articulate, and so on. And I said, what high school did you go to? Stuyvesant. Well, I said, well, guess what? 
So he doesn't know, but I'm going to give his name to this lovely lady here. <laughs> And he will be contacted to help on this project. But of course, it has to be with anonymity, because I don't want to be, oh, you fingered me. I don't want that to happen. Now, the last thing I want to tell you is stories are very important. And I'll tell you why I say that. A potential recipient of a scholarship award may be sitting somewhere thinking, I need a scholarship, I really do, and I work hard, but I guess there's no need of applying because you must be an academic genius to get one. And so stories need to reach people so they can understand, no, yes, there are high expectations, but you don't have to come with it all in advance. Now, what about potential donors? I remember at one time thinking, I'd like to do this, but I'm not wealthy. I don't have this kind of money. Well, you don't, because things can work out so that you can give whatever you are able to do. So that's why I feel it's so important to hear the stories that we hear, because we should share this with other people so that they realize, yes, I could become a donor. I could become a recipient, because there you have it. So I urge you to tell your stories as I will continue to tell mine. And I would like to quote the poet and author Maya Angelou because she sums it up well when she says, when we give cheerfully and accept gratefully, everyone is blessed. And I feel that everyone here feels blessed in what they have done. So finally, since this is an election season, I'm going to conclude by saying something to you that I've always wanted to say. <laughs> My name is Edward Matt, and I approve this message.